Hello everyone, welcome to William and the Magic Box. Today on our show, we are going to have Stan. Stan is from Paris. So let's see what Stan has to say. Enjoy the interview. Hey. Salut! Hi! <laughs> Hello Stan, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you so much for taking the time today for the interview, thank you! Thank you for inviting me. Stan, before we start the game, tell me um, where are you from? I'm from Paris, but I live in Paris. Ah, so you're from Paris and you grew up, you grew up in Paris? No, actually I was born in Lille, which is like north um, of France, and I grew up in Belgium. And now you live in Paris now? Yeah, for like 20 years now. <clears throat> wow, and what's the best part of living in Paris? Ah, of course not the price, because Paris is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but still it's a beautiful city and lots of people everywhere, great people to meet and in art, in the art field, it's very great city. I see. And um, what, what do you do for a living? I'm a dancer and performer. Wow, tell me a little bit about your job. <laughs> well, I mostly work with other companies like uh, as a performer. That's what I do most of the time. I also have my own company and doing my own artistic projects. I see. Do you think, you mentioned before about Paris, that uh, 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 being an artist, do you think that Paris in France, Paris is the right spot where you can find a lot of opportunities and the artists, they are all around as well? Yeah, that's one of the problems in France is that everything is centralized in Paris. So even when things are, will happen in other places, it all has to be organized and set up from Paris. So it's very centralized country and in the art fields, yeah. I see. So you strongly believe that people, when they start um, a career as a dancer or a singer or in the artist's world, Paris is the, the right spot to be, to start it. For France, yes, absolutely. Amazing. Okay, Stan, so before we start our journey, William and the Magic Box, I would like you to tell me something interesting about yourself. Uh, well, if we stay in what I do for a living, uh, I, I first had a drama school, so theater with text and everything. And then I, I, I went to dance uh, slowly but surely. <laughs> and that's, and yeah, so that's, I think, pretty interesting for me being in the dance uh, field, let's say. But I'm kind of an alien in the dance scene in France. <laughs> and I kind of like it. Very good, very good. Are you ready to go on a beautiful journey through your memories in life and to share your point of views? Yes, let's go. Well, Welcome to William and the Magic Box. So I have here my lovely box full of random. Random questions, okay? I'm just gonna play a song now just for us to move a little bit before the first question, okay? Cool, let's go. Let's do it. My God, I need to be careful. I'm, I'm, I'm dancing now in front of one professional dancer. My <laughs> God. <laughs> but everybody can dance. Everybody has a body, so everybody can dance. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, Stan, so just before we start the game, through the journey, if there is a question that you don't want to talk about for some reason, you don't want to answer, I always can change, okay? It's all very friendly. Okay. Right. First question is, describe yourself in three words. In three words, uh, artist, uh, alive, <laughs> and it's not the word, but I, I would say full of desire. Okay, and um, a negative word that to describe yourself, what that would be a negative word. I'm not sure it's negative, but for some people it could be I'm pretty 
secret mysterious and I don't speak it out. That's why it's a big challenge for me to be part of this interview today. Wow, I'm glad that you took the challenge. I'm glad you took the challenge. (laughs) Um, Is your star sign Scorpio? No, Sagittarius. Hmm, Interesting, because I'm Scorpio, and Scorpio, we have this tendency of being very private. We don't share a lot about our uh, our lives. People say that Scorpio, they have two lives. The one that they they show, people can see, and the secret one that nobody knows. (laughs) I totally relate to that, though. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe we have some connection in the the stars or something connected with the Scorpio, for sure. Second question, let's do it. Next question for you is, which bad habits do you wish you could stop? Smoking, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I've been so, trying and I've quit it so many times, but I'm, I'm saying I'm always back to it. So I still, well, I've been quitting like the next few months and I just got back a few weeks ago and I, uh, to, you know, fight for me. And why do you think you uh, come back to the habit? Is it because you feel more anxious or it's just a habit? Well, it's a habit and also it's very social. I mean, when you go out, it's always, you know, when you go, if you're in a club or in a bar, you just go out of the bar to like have fresh air, but then actually you smoke cigarettes. It's not fresh air at all, but still it's kind of a break in what you're doing. And this break, when I didn't smoke, when I don't smoke, because I'm sure it's going to happen again, uh, it's like, okay, so now I'm having a break, but what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I see. Yes, I have some friends that they smoke as well, and they tell me as well, sometimes it's very difficult. Um, even in big cities, when you go out and, you know, there's always people smoking, and it's like of a habit of socializing because people go outside for getting fresh air, and they start talking, and suddenly they start smoking as well. And uh, it's, um, yeah, it's, uh, I think the environment around us can be, you know, encourage you to do that, like push you to do that, for sure. Next question, Stan, let's do it. Right, before the next question, what's the best part of being a dancer? What is the most um, rewarding part in your opinion? And of course, there's always a challenging part as well, what that would be. Well, the most rewarding part is of course, the applause <laughs> of the audience, the, the, the feedback of the audience, uh, either during the show or after when people come to you and say, okay, I did like this, or even I didn't like this, but still it something happened. And that's the best thing. It's like really, it's life situation and it's all alive. That's why when you ask me, like, just give me three words, I said alive because that's what I'm doing. Um, so that would be, totally the more rewarding uh, aspect of it. And the most difficult one would be that you never really know what you're going to do next, because it's always like very short time contracts. So it's like, okay, what's going to happen next year? We don't know. And well, of course, lately without this virus situation was very hard. But yeah, but at the same time, I'm now at a point at the moment of my life and career that I manage that I I work with the same persons for quite a long time now. So I hope if everything goes well as it does right now, it should be okay for us to work together again and again. So, but still, it's always like, like, okay, what's next? You never know. And it's it's both um, super exciting, but it's some part it can be carry also like when you have to talk to banks for example or to, to to explain what you do it's like yeah okay i i have a situation but it's not like a regular situation when you have a job for the world or at least for a long time yes. but it's also like a, a, a freedom that you have to learn to work with and to live with I see. Um, you said something very interesting in the beginning of the interview, uh, Stan, that I totally believe. I agree that I totally believe that anyone can dance, yeah? But I'm not a professional person. I just love dancing. For me, personally, 
dance for me is like a therapy. You know, I, when I'm dancing, I feel like there's nothing around me. I feel like I'm the center of the world. I'm just connecting with this moment of expressing myself. It's like a therapy, yeah? But for you as a professional dancer, you know, when you said, when you mentioned the beginning that anyone can dance, tell me a little bit about why do you think that? Well, well, first of all, because I, as I told you, I'm from the theater and drama background, and then I moved to dance, so I didn't do like any dance school or whatever. I, I got my technique, but I don't have much techniques actually. But yeah, um, technique, it's hard to have, but physicality is something everybody has. And when, because it took me quite a long time for me to, to accept myself as a dancer, because I was not a dancer at first. And then I remember very well one of my very first dance teachers, she told me, well, dance is very easy. Dance is one body, one space, one rhythm. And it's like playing with these three parts, and that's what is dance. So this, everybody can do. Wow, amazing. I'll tell you something now, just remember now, last night, um, you know, the show goes on uh, the Matchbox every night, it's a new yeah. interview. And last night, it was a dancer for Paris as well. Actually, I met her in London once. She's a friend, one of my closest friends, uh, again, French. And um, we've been trying to do the interview for a few months, and we did a few weeks ago. And last night, um, it was on the show. Um, so, oh. yeah, you, you can have a look. I'll take that. Yeah, she was talking about dancing and uh, she posts a, a lot of her work as well on social media. And it's just amazing to see her, you know, expressing herself. And we talk a lot about dancing as well. But anyway, just came to my mind now. You can check it out, um, the sure, interview. I will. Her name is Lila. 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 Yeah. Next question for you is, who is the most influential person in your life? Hmm. I think about people who last in time, like doing their own thing and thinking, okay, that might be once again the same thing. Maybe it's gonna be something different, but I go on my own line, on my own process, on my own way of doing any creations. And I have lots of examples for now, but they're, more, they're French and they're like all from the dance or theater um directors are they're not very famous but that i really uh yeah and i that they're, they're kind of role models for me like to last and like no compromise <laughs> see and uh who is your big inspiration like uh for you like in, as an artist for you who that would be someone that you go like oh my god i this person brought me like some encouragement or uh, you know some kind of um, a way of it for you to be a dancer in the artist's uh, world well I, I could talk about like all these uh, belgium choreographers from the early century 21st century now like uh, jan favre um, alain platel uh, or now La Horde, La Horde, which is a collective that they must say now in France. And that's all for me, persons like who, well, also it was a moment in my life and in career that I was discovering this also, they had a very big impact for me. But still, yeah, I remember like when I saw the, my first piece by Alain Platel or by Yann Pau, it was such a shock for me. And I really thought, okay, that's what I want to do. And it was kind of dance but not dance as you imagine what dance is it wasn't theater as you imagine what that is and that was pretty was like a world performance show based on bodies that i've never seen in on stage before also so it was yeah it was a very big influence for me and still is actually and, w and when i talked about people lasting in time that that would be a very good example I see. Very good. Next question. Let's do it. Next question is done. Let's do it. Um, what makes you the happiest? Ah, what makes me the happiest? Uh, 
Uh, feeling free on the stage. <laughs> like Which in, one? in general, I, 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 and I'm very lucky also about this, that I'm free, like in my job, I still, I, I still, I can still say no. I'm free in my personal life. I'm free like in every level and it gives me so much power to, to go on. And I, I feel very lucky about this freedom that I have. Beautiful, my God, I love that. I think being free, it's um, is being happy. It be, makes your life the, the, the most you can be free. I think it's amazing as well. I love it, love one. Next question. Before the next one, tell me um, which kind of um, rhythm or music that you like to dance the most and uh, which one do you find more difficult? <laughs> Um, the most difficult, I would say, would be Baroque music, like from the 18th century, French Baroque music is very hard because it's very codified to me to use and dance. Um, well, the most easy for me, even if it's not that easy, would be like techno music because that's where I've come from and uh, I've been dancing on techno music for years and years now because I, well, I, I began very, very early after to dance in this kind of electro techno hardcore music. So yeah, I, and, and also there's something about the beat itself that is pretty, it's actually based on the heartbeat, which is totally different from the rock music, from classic music, which is totally based on the instruments themselves. And techno music was at the beginning, you know, it moved a bit and it's kind of evolving. But at the very, very beginning, it was based on the beat of the heart. So it's, it's actually very natural kind of rhythm for me to, to dance on. Very good. Next question is, if I would ask your best friend right now to define yourself in one positive words and one negative words, what your best friend would say? Uh, uh, I hope they will say uh, that I am very, I'm a very good listener, I think, that I really am, and really deeply, I love hearing people and whenever they want to talk to me and even if they don't want to talk to me i'm also here like just to say okay you don't want to talk to me right now but whenever you want whenever you feel you need to i'm here and i think that's what they would say about me I hope. and uh the negative thing as i told you that it would be like i'm so mysterious i'm so secret i so don't talk a lot about myself and even when I'm asked things, I'm like, yeah, I'm just giving a very, very small part of the answer. <laughs> and what do you think is that you always have this approach about life or is just a natural thing about you being secret? I don't know. I think I, I'm, I think I'm pretty a uh, lonely person and I don't know, it's, it's like, yeah, I, I like it. I like having my own private part. And I actually like it to be mysterious. <laughs> you are so Scorpio, my God. <laughs> <laughs> right, next question. Let's do it. Okay, Stan from Paris. Next question is, what's your parents' deeds um, that comfort you the most? But they did. Yeah, that comforted you the most. You felt safe about you. You feel very grateful for them. Mm -hmm. Well, I think they understand me, which is very like the very first step. <laughs> and yeah, because I'm, I went away from home pretty young. I was seventeen, so it's pretty young to come to Paris to do art, theater and stuff. So it was kind of strange for them because they absolutely, absolutely not in the art field. And it's, and I, I was in a kind of different scheme that they used to be and they never judged it. They never, 
and yeah they always understood it and it's like okay you do whatever you want to be happy and they're still here to say okay that's great you look happy and you say that you're happy so that's great and yeah that's Ooh. super rewarding so they always, uh, so when you decide to be, you know, in the arts field, they always supported you. They always were there for you. Yeah, well, at first they, they say, okay, well, if you want to do a drama school, maybe you should also go to university and do something at the same time. So I did, I did both actually. But then I, I went on the art field and, and they were happy and I never, they never judged me or never wondered what I was doing, even if, maybe they don't always understand what I'm doing like day by day. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that they, they understand it and that's, yeah, that's very helpful actually. I think it's very important and I think you are, you are very lucky to have a parent that, you know, even though I think it's a plus for you, you know, for you, you feel more safe, you feel more encouraged to know that your parents, they are supporting you. It's like a push, isn't it? Like when we have the, the support of your family, it's, it makes a difference for sure. Yeah. Ready for another one? Yeah. Yes, let's do it. We. Oui. Oui. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend is French. Um, he's from Bordeaux, uh, but he lives yeah. in in, Mont in Montreal, in Canada. And uh, my godson, I've got a godson, two years old godson, and oh. I just I just met last year Christmas for the first time. It was the most cute thing seeing him speaking French every day. He was like, <laughs> he was like, c'est moi, c'est toi, c'est moi. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. And sometimes I was confusing him. I was like, no, c'est toi. Same one. And wow. he was like, he was like, no, 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 same one, say to us. was so cute. <laughs> right, before the next question is done, you're saying that um, you you lived some, some time in Belgium. Why Belgium? Uh, well, that was my parents' choice, not mine, because I was still a child. Um, but actually, ah, we were. Ah, you were yeah. a child, you lived there. Oh, sorry, I thought you were yeah. that one. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, it was like from, I don't know. Well, all. All my childhood, basically, like from five to fifteen, let's say, kind of. Ah, okay. So you moved. But actually, there. we were living like very, like I don't know, two kilometers from France. It was really we were at the border. And when you think about Belgium, what's the best memories that comes to your mind? Um, um, well, <laughs> that's strange, but that would be like techno underground parties in the late 90s <laughs> like dancing in parking lots and <laughs> always dance around yeah. around the dance always yeah, yeah. that's sweet very sweet next question for you is what is the most romantic thing someone has ever done for you hmm. uh... Well, that would be, uh, so it's not a wedding because back then wedding in France was not uh, possible for same, same sex persons, but it was like a, a citizen pact. I don't know how to say it, like, but still a contract. But I, we did that long time ago. So it's, yes, c yes. Civil, partner civil partnership, yeah? Yeah, totally. So yeah, I guess that's the most fermenting thing we've done. <laughs> For so sure, <laughs> for sure. And I can see your eyes shining talking about yeah. <laughs> How long have you been together for? Um, 12, 13, 12. 12 years. Yeah. And so far, what's the most beautiful lesson you've learned from your partner? Um, well, it's everyday lessons. So I, I can tell about one. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. Amazing. Totally agree. I think every day it's a new lesson. Every day is a new <laughs> challenge, but it's beautiful. The, 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 the ride is beautiful, the journey. <laughs> look, look your smile and your eyes shining. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> must be thinking which kind of music he's playing and dancing <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like disco music 
Yeah, yeah, it's a Brazilian music in the night. Like no, sorry, uh, I think came along came along in the beginning of the 2000s. I think it's like funky for real. It's um, yeah. You're from Brazil. I'm from Brazil. Yeah. So this kind of music. I was a teenager. It was like. 13, 14 when it came out and sometimes I change the music as well when I'm doing the interviews because you know and I like to put those songs that um, somehow gave me some impact in my life because it brings me good vibe and good energy and I can share that with my guests as well so I like oh. it. Next question is um, what was your favorite part about school? My favorite? I'm sorry. Part about school. Uh... Well, the literature class, because I always loved reading. And I I remember, that like, I, I still remember some books I read when I was at school that are still very present in my life. And, and writers that I discovered back then and, like, still are with me. So, yeah, I really love literature and I must say I had I had some amazing teachers of stuff that I really thank for lots of things now, even for opening me to art, to theater, to and it, it, everything was part of the process at the school. And yeah, I'm very thankful that this is so. I think teachers, some of them, they leave a big impact in our lives and uh, we right. still have to say, still remember them, you know what I mean? Sometimes they, they even don't know how much yeah. they, they are giving this impact. I, I started doing interviews in Portuguese as well as my first language and I invited one of my favorite teacher. Now she's a uh -huh. lawyer. But at the time, she was um, a physical education um, uh, teacher and I love sports since young age. I love playing volleyball and I loved her because she was very, um, you know, imposing. She was very strong and somehow I remember I felt very, I felt very safe because, you know, I was gay. I, I was gay at the time and sometimes, you know, children can be very um, aggressive about be bullying, you know what I mean? Like, and I remember she was, when she was around, I felt safe. I felt because she was stand up for me, you know, and actually she didn't know that. And I told her in the interview and she got very emotional. I said, she said, oh my God, really? I didn't know that. I said, yes, you didn't know, but I felt so safe when you were around me because I knew you were there for me. I knew that if something would happen, you would stand up for me and you kind of protect it. Uh -huh. And she was so like, she was so happy. She said, oh my God, you just made my day now. Because yes, I totally agree. Teachers, they they leave big impacts in our lives. You know, even as an adult, even, you know, you always have this connection with the teacher. Saying that, who was your favorite teacher at the time? If you can pick one. Well, I had several best, best teachers. That's not a good thing. But uh, as you said, I remember one of, My teacher, she was like very, she was pretty small and she was like red hair, and very short hair, very man, manny woman. And, yeah. and she had a very deep voice like this. She was always smoking, <laughs> like hidden smoking in, 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 in the corridors and things. And she, she was, for me, she was such a punk. I was like, wow, <laughs> she's such a punk and she's a teacher. And I was like, wow, everything possible. <laughs> it's amazing, and you see the contrast. You don't expect to see a teacher like smoking on the side, and yeah, yeah, and, and, and she was hiding, but not really. I mean, she doesn't care. She didn't <laughs> care at all. She was like, okay, okay, I'm doing my own life. And same thing. I met her like years after school, you know, in the supermarket, that uh, just uh, by chance. And wow. I was like, oh, I'm so happy to see you. And she was still like this kind of punk woman doing okay. <laughs> buying boo booze at the supermarket i was like wow <laughs> i love you <laughs> oh, love <laughs> <laughs> i hope she watched the interview this so she's gonna be very that. <laughs> amazing right stan i have three questions left for you okay let's do it <laughs> next question for you is what is the funniest gift have you ever received? Well, I have friends, we, we, we have this habit now to buy to each other like the most serious books you could find, like very, like very bad pulp books for teenagers about very bad romance. Uh, we say in, in France, the Roman de Gare, which is like a, 
uh, train station books, you know, <laughs> that is very easy. And I have so many of these and I actually always read them. And it's actually very fun to read, mostly in summer, you know, you're in the beach or whatever. And it's actually very fun to, to read like very bad romance, teenager kind of attitude. I don't know. And I, uh, so I have a lot of this and I also buy and over lots of these and it's now a very good and enjoyable job now. <laughs> Amazing, and I, I, it's funny you saying that because sometimes you can learn from those books as well because they're so silly and funny and uh, totally. out of order. You know what I mean? And and all of a sudden, always there's like one sentence like giving you the meaning of life, and actually it still has an impact, even if it's so bad. But still, you read it and say, "Oh yeah, that's so true." What's going to happen between Brenda and Jason next? <laughs> It's like a drama. It's like a drama. Yeah, it, it's like bad soap. <laughs> so <laughs> opera, but in book. I can tell. You know, Brazil, we are very uh, very famous because of the soap opera. And we grow up yeah. watching soap opera. Sometimes I tell my friends, oh my God, we are so we make so drama about life because of the soap opera. We grow up watching the soap opera. Everything is like, wow, what's going to happen now? Anything makes you cry. Anything makes you drama. Yeah, <laughs> it's about soap opera. <laughs> yeah, and that's funny because, uh, uh, well, I don't have TV at home, and I, I don't, I'm not in, in this kind of, um, in this kind of, uh, well, I don't watch TV, and I never watch TV, but I'm like, when I'm on tour, I'm staying in an apartment where we have TV, or in a hotel, we, there's TV, and always there's like a soap opera still going on from the 90s, very French one, and with the same <laughs> actors, so they're now like, 20, 30 years older than they used to be. And they still have big dramas. And I love it. When I'm on tour, I'm always like, okay, I can watch it. And I'm so happy. And, and it's like, so, so so little things happen actually in this kind of soap opera. It's like, you can just watch one show every two years and you're gonna still understand it all. Totally. It, it's actually storytelling uh, is very, it, I don't know, it's kind of crazy. Uh, how the study storytelling goes and how time flows and this kind of stuff for Absolutely. So, uh, that's why I don't have TV, otherwise I would stick on the TV all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Two questions left. Let's do it. Stan, before the next question, as you are saying before about, you know, you like this um, when you are performing, you like this reaction of your uh, audience, you know, they, you know the, the reaction, the genuine approach that they see you. Tell me um, if you can remember one, one performer that you did that you go like, okay, that was remarkable, that was memorable that would always stand in my mind, um, if you can share. Huh. I would say like the very, very first piece I did just after drama school, so it was a long time ago, and it was not that professional, it was kind of done with, without, with my friends, and with my colleagues. And my grandmother came, and I was, uh, uh, for all the beginning of the piece, I was like hidden somewhere, supposedly dead. And then I walk up, like, wow. <laughs> and I remember my grandmother yelling, <laughs> like, uh, in French, uh, is, is that my little Stanny? Like, very oh. much yeah, <laughs> yelling. And I was, and I, uh, I had to laugh <laughs> a lot. And that wow. was amazing. I was like, okay, and she, she's not, used so much to go to theater and she was obviously with lots of emotions to see me perform and yeah that that was the best reaction ever like is that my little Stanny? oh very sweet <laughs> and my mother was next to her and she was, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> embarrassing <laughs> <laughs> she was very proud for sure she wanted yeah. to show how proud she was beautiful Next question is, what does success mean to you? Huh. Uh, well, it's always hard to, to know what success is because it's so relative, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I think what success brings is more opportunities and more freedom to choose. That 
I would say that's, that's the most important. That's okay. my answer would be like all of a sudden. <laughs> no, absolutely. I love that. I love your, actually, I love your answer. It's totally true. You know, it's a, it, you can see that you're going the right direction. Opportunities yeah. are coming and things are, are getting together. Totally yeah. agree. Good one. Ready for the last question? Right. Let's do yeah. it. <laughs> we. <laughs> but before the last question, people watching the interview, um, would you like to start a career as a dancer, as an artist? What would be your best piece of advice for those people? I'm sorry, my best advice? Yeah. Uh, to be patient, because it takes a lot of time to, well, to be, to fit at the right place. That's the, the main thing. It, it takes a long time and it's always a process. You always wonder what the fuck I'm doing here. Well, when just before going on stage, sometimes it happens that say, what, what am I doing? Maybe I would be better like home watching a TV, watching a bad soap opera. <laughs> and yes, yeah, so sometimes you really wonder what am I doing this? So it takes so much time to fit at the right place and also to meet the right person, even if it's not right or wrong, but the person who makes you glow, makes you shine, makes you, make you go on, makes you want to go on. So yeah, it's always, it, it takes so much time and it's, it's very tempting sometimes to say, okay, life could be so much easier if I do anything else. So yeah, that, that would be be patient, be patient, be patient. Good. Last question for you is, what would be the title of your memoir? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think that would be something very simple like my memoir. <laughs> something like, no, 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 nothing more than this. Like, oh yeah. Just, just everything is in the title. There's no, there's no mystery for now. <laughs> that, that, that's it. Now it's all the mystery is gone. So it's just what it is, and it's just my memoir. <laughs> that would be, I think, that would be good. Beautiful. I love that. Very good. <laughs> it's not the end yet. Let's play now the word association game. Okay, I'm going to give away some words, and just tell one word that comes to your mind. Quick thinking. Okay. 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 So, I hope you are enjoying the interview. Before we do the word association game, don't forget to give a like, don't forget to share this video, and also don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Just click on the bottom right there. Thank you so much and enjoy the word association game. Family. Mother. Money. Uh, shopping. Oh, <laughs> one word for love. Sorry? Love. Love. Uh, uh, hmm. I would say safety. Okay, one word for life. Uh, every day. One word for sex. Pleasure. One word for politics. Uh, confusing. <laughs> Religion. Uh, journey. Fear. Uh, escape. Friendship. Uh, fidelity. Desire. Uh, touching. Say again? Touching. Touching. Okay. Regret. Past. Success. Uh, future. <laughs> Good one. One word for wish. Uh, one word. <laughs> That's difficult. Uh, <laughs> Getting old. <laughs> Happiness. Love. Okay. 
one word for Paris. Uh, Eiffel Tower, of course. <laughs> Beautiful, I love it. One word for France. Uh, bread, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> One word for dancer, the last one. Uh, buddy. Okay. Let's pretend now I'm going to meet your lovely partner for a coffee. And I'm going to ask him, what is the most beautiful thing about Stan? And what's something that he still needs to improve on, to work on? What he would say? Uh, uh... Well, it's actually kind of the same at the, you, you asked kind of the same question with the best friend and the answer would be quite the same, I guess. Like the best thing he would say was the way I'm present, like on a day by day, day, by day basis, I'm always present for whatever happens and I'm always wanting to help, listen and I'm, yeah, I'm always there for the person I love. I think that, that would be the first thing. And the thing to be worked on would be um, yeah, it's just the same. Like don't don't be so mysterious. <laughs> just pick <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> Even he's very close to you, but he still can see this mysterious thing around yeah. you. Yeah. Interesting, very interesting. Okay, let's play now Stan in the magic box and you can ask me a question. But hey Stan, you can ask me a question now. Sure. Uh, so my question would be why how, what made you come from Brazil to London? What was your your journey? Okay. What happened? Amazing. <laughs> okay, let's be another hour talking about that, okay? <laughs> Joking. Okay, so the main the main reason uh, is that I always, uh, since as a child, I always had this personality of, um, you know, get to be a better person, to grow up, to go after my dreams, you know, to help my family. I always had, I remember as a child during my school holidays, I remember that I was seven years old, six, I was asking my dad if I could work during my, during my school holidays. And he was like, no, 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 you're too young. <laughs> You need to enjoy now your hol your holidays. So yeah, I always had this um, personality of you know getting a better life, going after my dreams, and um, I always wanted to live in a country as well where I could speak English every single day. When I was twelve yeah. years old, when I was twelve years old, I had uh, um, I started studying English and I fell in love with the language, and uh, I always wanted to live in a country uh, where I could speak English and. Um, Back in Brazil, we we tend to go to um, USA. Everyone has this America dream, you know. South America, we have this thing about going to America. Long long story short, I had when I was 19 years old, I had the opportunity to go to Portugal um, to live there. And uh, my God, I could write a book just this <laughs> no way. You should, you should. I will. No, I will totally because it's such a when I look back, it's such an inspiring story because it's so interesting how life takes in a direction that you're not expecting. I was never thought in my life one day live in Portugal. I never thought one day live in London. And nowadays I feel like it's home now. It's home, uh, England, being in, in London. And uh, I feel so fortunate and so grateful that uh, life brought me to this direction because I can speak in every uh, speaking every single day still, you know, and also uh, I found my place here. I feel so happy being in Europe, you know. I always tell my friends that I think in other lives I was uh, English, I was Dutch, I was <laughs> French, I was because I feel so homely around Europe, you know. I like traveling around Europe, and I always feel that uh, it's part of my life. I meant to be here. You know, so yes, the, the main reason I left Brazil was because of the language. I, I wanted to improve my English. I want to speak English every single day. And apart from that as well, I always wanted to give a better life to my parents. I always want to help my mom to give her support. You know, I always wanted to to go after my dreams, you know, to, to see the words. And uh, I'm so, actually this year now, this month is, is turning 20 years since I left Brazil, you can imagine. Wow. I've been Happy away. <laughs> yes, I've, actually, I've, I've I've been away from Brazil more than uh, I mean I've been 
lived in Europe more than I lived, left, lived in Brazil because I was 19 and, you know, it's been more than 20 years that I'm here. So, yes, I'm very grateful to, to the universe, to God that brought me here because it's my place. I feel so happy and fortunate uh, to be here. And, um, yeah, that's my answer to you. That's uh, that's why at the beginning I had another hour because it's such a... Uh, when I look back, my God, it, it was so difficult and it was so hard to, to buy the, the plane ticket to get the money for it. it everything was so hard but when you have this mindset of you know what i mean look going after it and don't be scared you can go anywhere and you can do anything because life is a is a, a it's a book of opportunities you know what i mean okay. and you just need to be brave to get into it and um, you can find beautiful things so yeah that's my answer to you Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for 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 making me go through all my memory. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy the interview? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you took the chance, the challenge. Thanks so much that you step out of your comfort zone. <laughs> thank you. And you left me going through a little bit of your mysterious life. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I feel fortunate that you, I, I, I really mean it because I, I totally understand some people, you know, they, they are private and they don't, you know, they don't have this tendency of talking a lot about their lives. And I feel so happy that, uh, when I approached you online and you were very missed, I said, my God, why should I be part of it? And after I kind of explained to you, and when you said yes, I was like, yes, you got it. I got so <laughs> yeah, it was kind of a challenge. And also I said, okay, well, why not? I mean, there's no, nothing to lose. And, and actually now I'm very happy to do it. I mean, it's great to meet you and it's, uh, it's great to, yeah, to talk to each other. So uh, thank, really you. thank you. Thank you. And I've got so many friends in Paris and uh, I've got some people who participate in the Magic Box as well. And I can't wait to go in, in Paris one day and to get everyone together, you know, for to go Are for... Are you sure? London, Paris, just like what, two hours now. So. Yes, yes, I will. No, I will. This year I, I'm planning to come to, to Paris and uh, for sure I'm going to tell everyone we can get together, you know, go sure. for a, a pint or just get together just to talk a, a little bit and connect with other people as well. It would be amazing. Sure, can't yeah. wait. Right. Can't wait. But before you go, I just would you like to share a positive message or a positive quote, something that inspires your life? <laughs> well, since you asked me that, I was thinking, well, I, sh I should think about something big, something important. And I couldn't find anything. And just yesterday, yeah, yesterday I was watching a, a documentary about Karl Lagerfeld. And, and he is such a punchline guy, <laughs> so, so I was like, oh, that's the one, oh no, that's the one, that's the one. <laughs> and one of the punchlines he had during the documentary is, you're the designer of your own life and that's on a day-by-day -day basis. And I was like, okay, that's, that's so true and it's so good to hear it. And yeah, you're, you're the one doing your own choice and you're responsible for yourself, basically, that's what you mean. So yeah, you're the, desire, the, the designer of your own life. And that's on a day by day basis. And that's it. Yeah. I'm so glad that to watch this documentary because now you could share this. It's so powerful. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And thank you so much. Regards thank to your you. lovely partners, regards to your friends, and I see you in Paris very soon one day, okay? Hopefully, you should get in touch. <laughs> take care. Hello, weekend, okay? Thanks for the interview. Thank you. Bye. Take Bye. care. Bye. So, did you like the show? Don't forget to give a like, share it, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And if you'd like to be part of the show as well, first, subscribe to our channel, and after that, just go to our website www.williamandthemagicbox.com and send us a request saying why would you like to be part of the show and I see you there. Bye-bye, see you next time.